If you've been following my channel and you know me, you know how much I love my M1 Mac Mini. I even called it the best valued computer, period. Well, what about a 2012 Mac Mini? In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this Mac Mini usable even in 2022. Let's get into it. Ah uh, yes, the 2012 Mac Mini. Look at all those ports. It's the four USB-A ports. There's the Ethernet jack, HDMI port. There's a Thunderbolt 1 port. There's an SD card slot that probably doesn't read my new cards. And wait, what port is that? That's a Firewire 800 port. You're probably too young to know what that is. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech. Everyday Tech for Everyday People. And over the winter holidays, I was in Boston visiting family visiting my brother's family and my mom who lives there now. And part of my task of visiting them or visiting my mom was to upgrade her tech. Now we've always given her kind of our leftover tech, which was good enough for her at the, at the time. But now that she's home more and she's really relying on technology, it was time for us to upgrade her technology. So we got her a new iPhone and a new computer. Well, kind of a new computer. Last time we got her her new computer, was this 2012 Mac mini that I have here. Well, her needs have changed. She really needs just to surf the web, check her bills, go on Zoom calls. So we got her a ninth gen iPad, which is the perfect thing for her. And I got her a keyboard with it, just in case she needs to write some long emails. But what about this 2012 Mac mini? Well, I decided to take it home to see if I can salvage it and upgrade it to make it a more usable computer. So I'm gonna tell you the steps I took to get that done. So let me tell you the specs of this Mac mini that I brought home before I did some of the upgrades. This is the 2012, late 2012 Mac mini with a dual core i5 processor. It has the Ivy Bridge processor, which is their Intel's third generation processor. It had four gigabytes of RAM and a spinning hard drive, a 500 gigabyte spinning hard drive with a 5400 RPM, not even a 7200 RPM. So when I got home, I fired it up and I just wanted to see how slow it was. And it just was really unusable. Anything that I loaded up, whether it be Chrome, Safari, any other program, just kind of took forever to load up. Now I did have an old OS on here. I had Mac OS 10.9 Maverick. I did upgrade it to 10.15 after that. It didn't make it better or worse. It just was really slow. So the two things that I wanted to do to kind of upgrade this is to change out that mechanical uh, drive to an SSD drive and then upgrade the RAM from four to eight gigabytes of RAM. So that's what I did. So the way I'm intending to use the Mac mini, this upgraded Mac mini is as a living room computer, not as another workstation, but something that I can connect to my TV for family Zoom calls, uh, for as a media player. So I decided to go with eight gigabytes of RAM instead of 16. I didn't feel like I needed that much more. So I went with two four gigabyte RAM chips from Samsung. And as far as the SSD drive, I didn't really need to go all the way up to 500 gigabytes. So I decided to go with a Kingston 240 gigabyte SSD drive, which was pretty cheap. I probably spent uh, about a total of $62 off Amazon before tax. So this generation of the Mac mini is a fairly easy one to upgrade. It has these slots here that you can just pop open. You don't have to pry it open. And overall, it was a very painless upgrade process. It took me less than 30 minutes. I was actually very careful. I'm not gonna go through a step-by-step -step process of how I actually did upgrade it. I'll link to the video that I did follow. It's a video by OWC, but it was a pretty painless process as far as upgrading the RAM and the SSD. Actually, the RAM is super easy to upgrade, but the SSD drive or the hard drive to get the old hard drive out, you gotta take some components out. But overall, it was a very painless process. You do need a T6 and a T8 Torx screwdriver to get it done. But other than that, it's a pretty straightforward process.
So what are the results of doing this upgrade? I would say night and day. It's a, it's a usable computer now. Before I had to wait for something to load, just I had to wait forever. Now it only takes a few seconds to load. It's not as snappy as my M1 Mac mini, but it's a very usable computer. Now the RAM makes a little bit of difference. I went from four gigabytes to eight gigabytes of RAM, but the biggest bottleneck on these old computers is the mechanical hard drive. So I went from a slow spinning 5,400 RPM mechanical hard drive to a really quick SSD drive. It's even a cheap SSD drive, but it makes a world of difference. So now I have a really usable computer. Then I did some tests to see if, if this is gonna work well as a living room computer. So I plugged in my Camlink 4K capture card and it ran the video very smoothly. So I know Zoom is gonna work great with it. And I was, I'm able to play some movies through QuickTime and VLC very smoothly. So I know as a media computer, it's gonna be very good as far as the living room is concerned. Now this did save me a lot of money doing that, doing these tests, because originally I was gonna get a refurbished M1 Mac mini. Now for my day-to-day -day computing, for my programming, this is definitely not gonna keep up with me, but for single tasks, things like Zoom calls or playing movies, this is definitely a great value. So when I finally hook this up to my TV in my living room, I'm probably gonna have to get a keyboard and mouse combo, a Bluetooth one, so I can control this computer. I can control it through my iPad and my Mac using VNC, but it'd be nice to have a dedicated keyboard and mouse with it. Now, other accessories that I might hook up to this is a Stream Deck Mini. It'd be nice, this would be for Zoom calls. It'd be nice to be able to kind of use one button touch to mute and unmute ourselves, uh, to hide our video, et cetera, et cetera. Because it's kind of hard to use a mouse and keyboard if you're sitting that far away to find that mute button. So I am gonna spend a little bit more money to get this up to speed, but it's gonna be a lot cheaper than my original plan of buying an, a refurbished M1 Mac mini. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, consider subscribing. Let me know if you've done any upgrades like this or if you have any questions about doing upgrades like this. Until the next one, see ya.